procurement of a neckbeard, ladies and gentlemen. The neckbeard is very underrated. In fact, it is not rated at all. In fact, it is in negative ratings. Neckbeards have negative ratings, and I'm telling you, I'm here to bring it back. Hello, bro man. Hi, mom. We're just having coffee and discussing facial hair options. One actually being a neckle hair option, being the neckbeard, which is, by golly, one of the most underrated, perhaps appropriately so, facial and neck hair options. But I tell you, I'm going to bring it back. I'm going to shave the whole face and just have the neck beard, wear it as a badge of, badge of, a badge of honor, a badge of honor as well. You know, they pejoratively use the term neck beard for people who like things, people like nerds, people who are geeks, people who are dweebs, people who are low-life losers, who have no life, who have nothing to do better than to talk about Star Wars and stuff like that. They use this as a bad term. So today we're talking about movies, probably about Star Wars, a little bit. Going to involve some, uh, <laughs> it's going to involve some, some neck beard. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, no one's had anything ever, ever good to say about a neck beard. And we're not going to start today. I'm drinking water from my patented branded as you can see with this fine branding and the the artisan label the aristotle full throttle water situation here like water for coffee that's a movie i bet you didn't know that and if you did you like bad movies i don't know i think it's a good movie today and every day monday through friday aristotlefullthrottle.com we talk about movies every day at noon for one hour and then you can go about your business. You can go about your quarantine. Quarantine. You could go about your isolationism. But today, for this hour, we have each other. And what we're talking about yesterday... <laughs> what we are talking about yesterday was buddy movies. Today we're talking about animal buddy movies. Movies where the animal is the best friend of the person. Or the person is the sidekick of the aminal. And I would like to say that there are plenty of movies like this, like Air Bud, like Free Willy, like Rin Tin Tin, like Benji. All of these movies. Hello, Kelsey, Alabama. Welcome. Sonic the Hedgehog. Is Sonic an actual hedgehog? You know, I was going to narrow this down to live action films only, using no animation. However, that's a rule. And today... And every day on Aristotle Full Throttle, we don't have any rules. We have no rules. That's the only rule we have. And if you follow that rule, you're fired. What's up, Will? Welcome. Afternoon to all. It's mostly afternoon in the United States right now. If you're in the United States, unless you're in Hawaii. If you're in Hawaii, it's like morning, early morning in Hawaii. If you're in America. But if you're watching the rerun, as you can every day on Instagram, and on YouTube, you can go back, watch the reruns, check it out, rewatch it, chat with people who aren't there anymore. You can see the old chats, you can respond, you can comment, you can subscribe to my channel. And if you do so, get this. Video games. You like video games? Do you like lint in your beard? I do. Do you like neck beards? Who is double toasted? Listen, I'm talking about my giveaway. If you subscribe to my channel, this will this might blow your mind, but you can win a PS5 if you subscribe to AristotleFullThrottle.com. If you do that, you do that, we get to 10,000 subscribers, not like the negative 18 subscribers that I got this month. <laughs> if you do that, you can win a game. And if I had if I had an easy way to win a game system, that's that's the game, that's the route I would take. I would go to Aristotle Full Throttle and say, hey, man, why don't you give me a video game? And I'd say, why don't you subscribe to my channel? Leave a, leave a comment. Don't say anything about my neck beard. It's coming in. It's really coming in, you know? That's what they say when your hair is coming in and you should really shave it off. You're, uh, I'm pretty pumped, man. I'll tell you something, Will. This coffee is good. 
It's mostly water, but I still like it. And I also have water, which is good. We're pretty pumped. We're talking about animals. I love animals. I love dogs. I love dogs mostly. Dolphins. Screw dolphins. They don't have thumbs. They luck. They did not win the evolution lottery. Although they can communicate with their sound waves. But I can do that. Look. I just ordered a sandwich. It's going to be here in about 20 minutes. Just wait. I, I, it will be delivered by Orca Whales. Speaking of orcas, remember Free Willy? Remember that movie? Remember when Michael Jackson did the song for that soundtrack? Maybe you don't. Maybe you shouldn't. Do you remember Michael Jackson, guys? I think Michael Jackson will be erased from the history books. He'll be erased from existence. Like Doc Brown says in Back to the Future. I think... I don't know how this turned into a discussion about Michael Jackson, but I think it's pretty funny because it was a phenomenal situation in the 80s with Michael Jackson becoming this gigantic pop star. And then all of a sudden, you know, on account of the um, <clears throat> child molestation, he is he's dead and his reputation has since been rightfully destroyed. <laughs> so there is no more Michael Jackson and people will not perpetuate the idea of Michael Jackson, the 80s will be lost in a vacuum forever. Maybe that's the premise of a movie. Go back and convince Michael Jackson to not molest and victimize young humans. Terrible person. Dead, though. So that's good. Larger Than Life was my first contribution. Larger Than Life. Is that the one with Shaquille O'Neal? I don't remember Larger Than Life. Let me see. Oh, Larger Than Life. That was uh, Backstreet Boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, no. You're talking about The Elephant and Bill Murray? Yeah, that was a good one. Bill Murray with an elephant. You know what happens? You know what they say in Hollywood? I like to bring a little bit of Hollywood inside baseball to the show. They, have, they always say never work with kids and don't work with animals. And guess what? The first two commercials I did, I worked with kids in one and animals in the other. And I'll tell you, it went just as good as they say. It went as well as my neck beard. We're just going to bring in the neck beard as a riff on today's show. Get used to it. From famous to infamous. Yeah, you should never work with animals. But the animals are cute. But I don't think animals should be on movie sets. Did you ever see that video of the dog was like treading water and they were like splashing it with water and it was for some movie about dogs and I was like, don't do that to the dog. Dog doesn't care. Dog just wants a treat. Why are you throwing him in the, in, in the pool? He doesn't care. He doesn't want that. He doesn't want to be in your stupid movie. Did you ever see Milo and Otis, that movie about a dog and a cat? They, they were in a box and they were in a river. They actually killed 14 kittens in that movie because it was made in Japan. They didn't have any like regulations on animals. So next time you watch that, think about all of the, the kitten murder. <laughs> think about all of that. Just think of that movie is not as cute as it wants to be. Sometimes you got to lose a few kittens to make a good movie, apparently. That was the negotiation they made with that movie. They didn't have the same animal rights protection. You ever notice at the end of the credits when it says no animals were harmed in the filming of this movie? That's actually something that they really need to, to put at the end of every movie because it's just a legal disclaimer. But I don't know. Sometimes they harm animals. You shouldn't harm animals. Animals are nice. They're friendly. They just want to do the thing that they do best, which is be an animal. Wait. McConaughey's first movie was not Dazed and Confused. McConaughey's movie was larger than life. Holy crap. Yeah. I don't know how my computer figured this out, but I just started typing Matthew, and then it said McConaughey larger than life on Google. Isn't it weird how Google kind of predicts what you're going to type next time? Which is so bizarre and so stupid because, of course, I just start to type the letters M-A-T-T, -T, and Google just assumes, oh, you want to look up Matthew McConaughey larger than life, don't you? How does Google know that? How does Google know that if, it's, if Google is not inside my head or inside Will's head? That's, that's just ridiculousness. <laughs> 
I love to watch what the autocomplete is on Google sometimes. If you just type in a letter, just watch what the autocomplete is. Because it's animal movies. Uh, obviously, I've been recently searching that. But Matthew McConaughey. Boy, oh boy, what an actor that is, right? Am I right, ladies and gentlemen? Matthew McConaughey, greatest actor to ever have lived in the last four years, probably, maybe six years. He got, he got actually good at it. You know what happens, guys? If you do something long enough, you'll, you'll eventually get good at it. Except for Larger Than Life, the movie with Bill Murray, Matthew McConaughey, and a giant elephant from 1996. It only got 11% on Rotten Tomatoes because it's going to keep trying, though. It'll come out every single year until it gets to 12%. It's not going to get anywhere. That movie, that's a movie for sure. Beastmaster. Let's talk about Beastmaster because there's ferrets in it. That's a ferret. Guys, I didn't even know what a ferret was until I saw Mark Singer playing around with him in his underwear. And I was like, this movie's weird. I don't know why he's got to be so scantily clad. I thought, even as a child, why does Beastmaster only wear a pair of briefs? Can't Beastmaster just like, like, can't he wear like a shirt? <laughs> can't we get Beastmaster a shirt that says like, like, uh, I don't know, ferrets are, are friends, not food or something. Why can't Beastmaster get that shirt? That's a ferret. That's what his shirt should say. Beastmaster, Mark Singer, and there's a sequel to Beastmaster, and they did that sequel device where they take the Beastmaster out of his dimension and put him in the 80s or the 90s. I always liked that convention, but I only liked it once. <laughs> I think I only liked it because Masters of the Universe did that, and that was kind of a dumb first move. You should do that a second move. You do the first movie, you do fully on Eternia, and then you take He-Man and the Masters of the Universe, you take them, and then you put them in Los Angeles or New York or wherever they ended up because and, and with principal, um, with the principal from Back to the Future. That's what I remember from Masters of the Universe, ladies and gentlemen. If there's anything I remember, it had... Frank Langella playing Skeletor, Dolph Lundgren playing He-Man, and the the principal, Principal Skinner or whoever, what was his name? <clears throat> From Back to the Future. If there's anything, that guy was that guy was definitely typecast in those 80s movies, man. He was a bad cop, ferrets. There's probably a hawk, baby. Remember Hudson Hawk? That was a movie. That movie wasn't bad. It was kind of ridiculous. It was all over the place. It had, it was kind of like this show. It's it was uh, it's got Bruce Willis, Bruce Willis, Hudson Hawk, lots of punching. I think it even that movie even has. Um, does that movie? Correct me if I'm wrong. But does that movie have Amanda Plummer in it? Beastmaster, not Beastmaster, but Hudson Hawk. Let me write cast. Google's helping me out today. Google's my co-host. No, it has Sandra Bernhard. That's, I confused them. I confused, it's got Frank Stallone. Yeah, any movie with Frank Stallone is good in my book because it's usually a, a Rocky movie. But after that, you know, you don't want Frank Stallone in your movie. You don't even want him on your soundtrack. Frank Stallone writes like these 80s songs where they're very uh, earnest, where he's singing and he's like, I'm Frank Stallone. And I got something to say but in an 80s way because he's just like he he could sing but he doesn't have the musical talent i don't know what that means i think you know what that means like someone can tap their feet but they're not a dancer you know what i'm saying he could play the guitar but he's not a guitarist you know what you know what i mean the guy could lay down concrete but he's no asphalt it's not his asphalt Hudson Hawk was basically Deadpool type action farce. <laughs> Kinda, yeah. Hudson Hawk. Sandra Bullard, Bernhard was in that. Why do I confuse Sandra Bernhard with Amanda Plummer? Someone please answer that, because I, I don't know. <laughs> Will remembers from Hudson Hawk that someone dies from a face full of syringes, and that's about it. Oh, it's pretty good. I remember that they were in Paris or something, and they were someone was on a stretcher, and it was like 
was like a comedy where they were on a stretcher and they were going down the street driving the stretcher in traffic or something. That's probably what it is. What's up, the Lamian, <clears throat> the Lama Yan? We're talking today about animal movies, and somehow we ended up talking about Hudson Hawk. <clears throat> because that's what happens. Was Bruce Willis in any movie with that involved an animal? I feel like he would stick very closely to the idea of not working with animals. He's Bruce Willis after all. Bruce Willis barely, barely lifts a finger. He does not like to, to work, apparently. He was in that movie, um, Cop Out, with my favorite, Tracy Morgan. It's hard to picture Amanda Plummer. My favorite um, comedian, one of my favorite comedians, Tracy Morgan, he's in that movie with Tracy Morgan, and they sit there, they're, they're talking the whole movie, and apparently Kevin Smith wrote and directed that movie and did not, like, he did not have a good time with um, Bruce Willis. I don't know how you don't have a good time with Bruce Willis. He seems like a great time. He seems like a fun guy. He seems like it's like, hey, Bruce Willis, did you bring a razor? Let's all shave our heads today. He seems like a kind of guy that you'd sit down and say, hey, remember when you were in Die Hard? Remember when you tied the, the hose around your waist and you jumped off the roof and the roof exploded? That was cool. Do you want to do that again? Do you want to do that later, Bruce Willis? Do you want to go up to the roof of my building, Bruce Willis, and maybe jump off it a little bit? No? Okay. That's cool. We'll just shave our heads. You and me, Bruce Willis. We in this together, Bruce Willis. I think Bruce Willis would be down for that. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. I think Bruce Willis, Bruce Willie, I call him. I'll tell you, he's got a, that guy's got a career and a half. He's got a career and a sneer and a half. That dude's career, let's talk about Bruce Willis for a minute. Bruce Willis has a career mostly of this. No, I don't think so. Okay. Not on my watch. I'm Bruce Willie. Really? Okay. I'm Bruce Willie. That's like that's basically the last 30 years of Bruce Willis. Maybe some of this. Yippee ki yay. That's the career you want. I've actually I noticed something about Bruce Willis's acting. He always he's always getting dressed. Every scene he's in, he's like, I tell you, next time we get to we get to the place, we're gonna he's putting his shoes on, he's lacing them. He's like, I tell you, when whenever you're gonna I've got a thing later. He's taking his shirt off. I think this is the thing that actors do. They have a thing that they're good at. And Bruce Willis is good at like putting a shirt on while he's talking and tying his shoelaces. Now that I've said this to you guys, you are only ever going to see Bruce Willis getting dressed or changing clothes in every movie that he's ever in. I could name like five movies right now where he's like putting a shirt on, tying a shoe, telling me what the game plan is. I'll tell you. Die Hard, Pulp Fiction, North, Remember the movie North, directed by like, Rob Reiner, with uh, Ethan, what's his name, Estrins, Johnny, Freddie, Ma Macaulay, Culkin, Light. What's the guy's name? The other kid, the the Frodo guy. That guy, <laughs> he's he's with Frodo, putting a shirt on. Bruce Willis always putting a shirt on. Luke is talking. Bruce Willis, I'm a baby. What do you want? I'm a sneering baby. I got a career sneer. Yeah. What's up, Tatiana? Hello. We're talking about Bruce Willis and putting a shirt on. Bruce Willis is always good at tying his shoelaces. I'll tell you this. He could tie his shoelaces and act at the same time. Something that perhaps not all actors can do. Some, you, know, you know, it's funny. The acting thing is interesting. I gotta oil this up. Hang on a second. The acting thing is really funny because some actors don't remember how to be people. <laughs> They like, they'll be in the scene and they'll say, and sometimes it's the director's fault, but they'll be like, I would like to order a sandwich, please. And then the person's like, what would you like on that sandwich, please? And then they're like, I would like a 
something. But they don't show like anything about being an p- actual person with a character. A lot of actors sometimes, like if you were to order something, you might be like, oh, okay, I'm looking around the menu, I'm looking at my watch, I'm talking to my friend. You've got to add all of these real things into what you're doing because otherwise it's BS. Yeah. Don't try. Don't even try to remember the movie North, Will. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I promise. It's not worth it. But every time you watch um, Bruce Willie, he gonna be changing his clothes all the time. Hang one second. Matthew McConaughey is in that movie. I'll tell you that larger than life movie. I just remember that they do an airdrop. Hold on. They do an airdrop in that movie of an elephant. Yeah, Cat's Eye, Cujo. Cujo is a good one. Cat's Eye is good because just the whole movie follows the cat. That's a buddy. If not, the cat becomes everybody's buddy. Cat's Eye is a good movie. Cat's Eye is a Stephen King book adapted. Ad, ad, adapted, adapted. It's Stephen King. He doesn't speak English. He's from the New England. They say adapted. He was. He adapted. Funny thing about Stephen King is that every movie that he does, every book that he writes, gets the the licensing to create a movie from that book so he gets the publishing for the book and the movie at the same time since like the 60s or the 50s which is a pretty good oh yeah airdrop operation um, dumbo drop that's another one isn't that another one bill murray bill murray's in a lot of giant elephant movies i think i don't know what's up jimmy james cordova what's up sarah hostadart that's we're talking about we're talking about giant elephant movies being dropped from a plane not only the movies but actual elephants in those movies being dropped from planes if you could follow along i will give you a blue ribbon for the day general has it cats general was the cat's name right i think so i think that was one of the cat's names there's a movie called cat's eye it's from the 80s it's an adaptation from the book by Stephen King, and it's four different stories, I believe, or three different stories of this cat just going through life and kind of escaping things, and one of them involves a little breath-stealing monster troll from the from a wall, which was cool. Um, was that the one with Drew Barrymore? Because Drew Barrymore was in Cat's Eye, and she was in Firestarter, which were two Stephen King movies, and uh, those were, I'll tell you something, I'll tell you something. Star Wars is bad movie. <laughs> but they that little troll comes out the wall, and this is why cats get a bad reputation of stealing your breath at night, because really it's just a troll, and the cats scare the trolls away. The troll climbs up on your chest and has like a little knife, right? And he comes up to you and he's like, <sighs> and he tries to breathe in your breath and tries to murder you in your sleep. This is how trolls do it. There's a troll union. There's a whole rule system on how to be a troll, and that is a uh, part of it. That's part of your initiation. You gotta, you gotta make a hole in the wall like a mouse hole, but just not like a small hole, <clears throat> an actual tiny little doorway. Because that's how Tom and Jerry do it. You have to have a little doorway if you're a mouse. Yeah. So, you, Will brings up that Drew Barrymore. It is kind of a succubus type of situation. If you guys don't know what a succubus is or an incubus is, um, then uh, <laughs> I thought of five jokes that I could have said that were not good, but I didn't say them. If you guys don't know what a succubus is, I'll give you my ex's phone number. That's hilarious. That's a good joke, guys. That's really funny. Um, succubus steals your soul and your spirit from you at night. It drains you of everything. Same thing with an incubus. They're both demons that perch in like the corners of your room at night and then wait to you to fall, for you to fall asleep and then they suck your energy out of your body. Um, but usually, basically in Ghostbusters, remember Ghostbusters? 
Anybody remember that movie, Ghostbusters? Yeah, the one with Leslie Jones. That's the one I'm talking about. Ghostbusters came out a few years ago. It's just all women. That's the Ghostbusters I'm talking about. That movie was not a classic movie, but I'm talking about the original Ghostbusters with Dan Aykroyd. Dan Aykroyd has a succubus visit him at night. It's a type of demon. It's a type of demon woman. Um, it's a funny scene, but they cut it out when they edit it for TV because the demon woman performs like demon demon sex act on on uh on ray ray stance the most innocent of them all all right the paddy wagons here guys i gotta go <clears throat> they showed they finally shown up they tuned in and they watched this show and they figured out they need to take me away in a cart succubus is a female seduction vampire and incubus is male yes that is exactly right there it's a it's a vampire of your soul and your energy. You don't want to get involved with them unless it's the band Incubus, which is pretty cool. They're good musicians, actually. And uh, they're all from LA. And they play music and they're pretty good at playing the music. And they should continue to play music and not steal the souls of women. Hey, Dooney, what's up? Today we're talking about animal movies. Is Babu Frick an alien? He's an alien animal. Babu Frick is my biological father. You know that Chewbacca, Chewbacca, that's a dog. I like dogs. Chewbacca's a dog. That's an animal movie. That's a sidekick movie right there. Han Solo and Chewbacca. I've never, if that's an animal movie, if I ever saw one, and I never saw one. I never saw a single one. Hey, almost about half a scene. Yeah. But I'll tell you something. Go watch that movie. Uh, Cujo and Cat's Eye. Cujo is about a giant dog, but the funny thing about the movie Cujo is it's a giant St. Bernard dog that murders people. He's like a vicious St. Bernard dog. And he's like this big, giant St. Bernard, cute, cuddly dog. St. Bernards usually have a thing, a little whiskey around their neck so that when you're in the cold, they come down and you drink the whiskey and you feel warm. They, they, and they warm you up. They, they rescue. They're like rescue dogs. But in Cujo, no, this one's a murdering this one's a murderin'. He goes around a murderin'. The funniest part about Cujo, though, is he's just so cute and cuddly that it's hard to get scared of this giant murder dog. You're like, oh, that dog's cute, though. And then they, like, slather the dog with fake blood, but the dog's just being cute the whole time, like, like, licking the blood off, and you're like, that dog's not really acting. <laughs> that dog's not really acting scary. But the whole time, you're like, oh, that dog's going to murder these people. But then it shows up. And then they have to film it in a vicious way. But it's not very vicious because it's just a cute, big, giant St. Bernard that you just want to hug and cuddle. And you're just like, this is a cute, this is a cute animal right here. Why, why am I going to be afraid of this dog? And it, and it shows up. And then everybody's like, oh, my God, it's Cujo. And he shows up. He's like, hey, everybody. I'm Cujo. I'm going to murder you now. It's okay. They put a little fake blood all over my face because I'm supposed to be vicious, but not really. It doesn't really work. They didn't have the technology. They didn't have the murder technology in the 70s like they do today. They really needed to make Cujo. I don't know. It's like you got to make it. It's almost as if the Mogwais from Gremlins ate your face instead of the Gremlins. But... There was Cujo and there was that movie Christine that came out around the same time when Christine was about a murdering car that just, if you dented it, it undented itself. And you were like, uh, that was like, that was a pretty cool car. You could go to the demolition derby and then come back the next day with a brand new car. That's what I say. Don't worry, do not follow me. I'm serious. It's okay if you're late. We'll wait. We didn't talk about anything yet. We've just been, we've just been BSing this whole time. We'll come up with something. But, uh, yeah. Star Wars Episode Nine, terrible movie. Don't watch it. It's bad. That's uh, what I have to say about that. Just watch the original series of Star Wars. And that's just my daily, my daily public service announcement to anybody who's curious about the, the new trilogy. Or Episode Nine, anyway. It's not that good. I'm going to just crap talk that movie. I know... Jimmy James Cordova, that you love Star Wars. I know that you love Star Wars. I love Star Wars too. 
I love Star Wars all the way up to episode nine. <laughs> but I also don't love Star Wars the first three episodes. But it's okay. We can have different opinions. We can like different things. We could say Free Willy is the greatest movie about an orca whale ever, but then you would forget about the movie Orca, which is about a killer whale that was actually super killer. There's a problem with some of these animal movies, is that sometimes animals are too cute to be murderous, and Jaws, there was a shark, right? Super scary, great white shark, gigantic great white shark, huge teeth, would murder you, would eat your legs when you're trying to swim, and then you wouldn't be able to swim away. He plays the ch he plays the cello, but only two notes. That guy, he's he's not very good at cello, but he was go he's good at killing you. He'll eat you alive. But then a couple years later, they were like, what else can we put in a movie that's like a killer animal? How about these giant cuddly orca whales that look so cute and not violent? They look like little big giant. They look like giant. Um, what are those dolls with the big square heads? That's what a killer whale looks like in real life. Harrison Ford's Call of the Wild did come out, Will. Will's asking about Call of the Wild. I have a problem with that movie, and I haven't even seen it yet, because why do I gotta animate the dog? Just cut to the dog. Just, cut, just use footage of Cujo and cut it into Harrison Ford's movie, and it would be just as cute and cuddly. Maybe just a little bit of blood around the mouth. That's fine. That's fine. We can deal with that. It's okay. <laughs> I think Harrison Ford could deal with that. Harrison Ford's so grumpy that he would make Cujo look happy and cheery. Man, what did what did whatever happened to Harrison Ford to make him so grumpy? I think he made so much money early on that he's just like, uh, you gotta cart me out for another one of these movies. Sure, I'll show up in Star Wars Episode Nine. It's gonna suck. Spoiler. I mean, he's like, how much money you got, Disney? I need to buy another five planes. Yeah, I could show up for an afternoon of filming. For one scene. Yeah, I'll take three million dollars for that. Good golly. What it would be like. But Harrison Ford's Call of the Wild movie did come out, I think. And it got good, decent reviews, I think. But the dog is a cartoon dog. Why use a cartoon dog? Why can't you use a regular Cujo? Godzilla and Godzilla King of the Monsters. Are those animal buddy movies? Sure. Why not? Godzilla and King Kong, they actually fought each other, but then they became friends. I got a, I got a situation here, guys. Will, especially, maybe you can answer this, but Godzilla is like a hundred times bigger than King Kong, so Godzilla gonna eat King Kong in one, maybe two bites. So I don't even understand how they can fight each other. I do believe that King Kong got irradiated in their battle that took place in the 70s, I believe. And King Kong got further irradiated, which, of course, radiation only makes you grow to the size of a skyscraper. If you knew anything about radiation, science, and doctors, that's all they're doing. They're just trying to grow you to the size of a skyscraper so you could fight a potential Godzilla attack. King Kong fought Godzilla, but then, but Godzilla is so much bigger, so I don't even understand. Godzilla's kind of a weird thing. Godzilla, let me tell you something about Godzilla. He's a kaiju. He's from under the ocean. He's basically an idea that was birthed out of World War II after we dropped some nuclear bombs on Japan. Yeah, guys, the worst war crime in the history of wars was committed by the United States by dropping not one but two atomic bombs on Japan. So Japan's culture is indelibly marked by that event. So deeply is it in their zeitgeist that they created movies about giant irradiated monsters coming out of the ocean and destroying cities. I wonder why that is. Perhaps we traumatized Japanese culture forever. You don't want to do that to a culture. But, yeah. The other thing about Godzilla is he shows up. He destroys an entire Tokyo. And then they got to rebuild Tokyo. He comes, he shows up. He's like, ah, meh, meh, meh. You know, he's got that, like, 
that like bird call. And he's just, he's very stiff. His tail drags along the ground. He destroys like trillions of dollars worth of real estate damage. But then at some point in the movie, he wins us over. <laughs> at some point in the movie, some point in the movie, Godzilla were like, you know that Godzilla, he's not that have he's not half bad, that Godzilla. He's alright. That God I know he destroyed Tokyo like 15 times already. But he's alright. I can't wait till he shows up again to kill Mothra. Cause it's a giant moth. There's nothing more menacing, ladies and gentlemen, than a giant caterpillar, first of all. A giant caterpillar that shoots its like webbing on everything. But it's even worse when it pupates and turns into a giant moth. (laughs) Not only did we impact the Japanese culture with atomic warfare, but the next greatest thing to come out of that, the next greatest villain, not just like an undersea gigantic dinosaur from the past that has been irradiated and becomes a gigantic monster that destroys cities. They were like, what next? And they were like, I don't know, moths? They're pretty scary. I got them in my closet. They're annoying. I don't like moths. They're kind of gross. You know what you just need, though? You just need to, like, shine a giant light. The moth will just turn its body and just fly around the light, and then you could, like, get the swatter. You get the giant bug zapper. You could get a taser gun and probably defeat Mothra. You, all you need is a blue light or a yellow light. That's brighter than the moon. Just wait till night. Wait till a new moon. Shine the bat signal. Batman will take care of it. Easy. Let's get rid of this Mothra bullshit. Mothra ain't got nothing. They were like, giant kaiju sea creature reptilian dinosaur breathing fire and electricity. And moths. Why not? Versus a moth. A giant moth, though. Because you need, like, two little tiny Japanese ladies singing. They need to sing to moth Reddit. There's a whole thing involved, guys. I'm not sure if you're aware of this, but Mothra, it's a real threat. Man of Steel and and Godzilla might as well be the same movie. Let them fight. Yeah. Man of Steel. I'm glad you brought it back around to Man of Steel. I I rewatched that scene again the other day where where I'm going to say it again because it boils my blood, Man of Steel. Remember that scene where you guys know me by now. You know how much I hate this. (laughs) Yeah, it is a giant killer moth. Uh, do not follow me up serious, but all you need is a giant can of Raid. All you need is a black flag spray can. Do one of those and take care of Mothra. Mothra's gone forever. You sing a song to Mothra. You sing the wrong song to Mothra. Mothra will destroy your city with wind from Mothra's wings. I want to pl- play that song, the... Uh, the wind beneath my wings and show Mothra singing to get in sung to by those little two Japanese ladies and uh, flying over the city. But Man of Steel, that scene where Superman is fighting Zod and Superman is getting his ass handed to him by Zod and Zod says, oh my God, this atmosphere is making me crazy. I can't see straight. What have you done to me? And Superman's like, oh, let me just try and recover from you this serious beating that you've given me and tell you what you need to do to get better, opponent, my enemy, after I have the drop on you, after you've already, you know what should have happened, which is like in Avengers Age of Ultron, when Ultron's standing there going, okay guys, blah, 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 and then the Hulk just runs and smashes him, punches him, he's just like, poof, like in the middle of his speech, basically the same thing, you know, when uh, Loki said, I will not be bullied by... And then just Hulk just smashes Loki. That is what needed to happen in that moment. 
When Zod's like, whoa, I'm dazed and confused, Superman should just went pummel, 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 Kryptonian handcuffs. You're done. Not murdered him, not broken his neck, not killed Zod, because why would you kill Zod? Why would Superman murder people? Superman is not a murdering guy. That's like on the checklist of things. Superman, what will you do? Oh, you know, I'll save people. I'll be faster than a locom I'll be stronger than a locomotive, faster than a speeding bullet. I'll be able to leap tall buildings in a single bound, and also I could break Zod's neck. That's like the bottom checkbox on his list of things to do. Break Zod's neck and murder him to death? Superman's like, nah, I skipped that one. Superman doesn't murder, guys. You need a moral center in order to have Batman be sort of an amoral type of dude where he's like, I'm going to get the job done no matter what. Superman, you can go by your little Boy Scout rules. I don't need to go by your Boy Scout rules. You're Superman. I'm Batman. I'm an adult. I wear bat pants. I have a fancy belt because I'm an adult. I can afford Armani suits, even though I don't know Armani makes suits. I can afford. I'm Bruce Wayne. I can pay for nice things. But I will wear a rubber suit and a shiny yellow belt that has shark repellent. Superman cannot brutalize, do that, yeah. But Superman should have just seriously just handcuffed or like used Kryptonian technology to contain Zod because Superman does that. Sorry guys, he doesn't murder people, Zack Snyder. So dumb. Am I right guys? Are you with me on that? If you're just tuning in, you're watching Aristotle Full Throttle. Today we're talking about buddy movies and, and uh, animals in movies. But so far, we've barely talked about that. Mostly we're talking about how dumb Star Wars Episode Nine and Man of Steel are. Every day at noon, on Instagram and on YouTube. We're going to do this on Twitch eventually. Eventually when I get around to it, because it's, it's, it's all very difficult, guys. Setting up one of these things is like not as easy as it should be. I should just be able to press a button, and then everything should just start, but every platform has got its own way of doing things, and then you got to figure out each different type of platform, and then, and then you, before you know it, you're on TikTok every day, and you're watching TikTok all day long, and you're like, how do I make another funny TikTok, and then you, and then you, uh, you curl up in a ball, and you start crying, but that's just normal, at least... He didn't kill him the way Godzilla killed monsters, by breathing into his neck. And th Yeah, that was cool, though. Godzilla can c kill people that way. I like when Godzilla opened up the mouth of the bad guy and then breathed down his neck. That was cool. Godzilla don't got no morals. He's an animal. He's a giant animal. Superman makes the residents of Metropolis complacent because he can be everywhere to solve everything. Yeah, it's kind of like the Flash. The Flash is everywhere at all times. Eventually. I don't know if you know that about the Flash, but he goes into like this super quantum thing where he's literally running around all of the time, so he's in all places at once. Pretty neat. I do like how Godzilla murders, though. He's pretty cool. I like the, I like how I put John Wick in the thumbnail of this because hey, that's a pet buddy movie. I think there's no greater motivation in any action movie that has ever been made than in John Wick. When John Wick's dog gets killed. Because listen, you kill my dog, I'm coming after you. I don't care how many Russians are in between me and you. And you know who I am. I love how they, when they find out whose dog they killed, John Wick's in retirement. His dog gets murdered by some like Russian guy. John Wick finds out that it's like some Russian agency. And they're like, uh-oh, not John Wick's dog. You didn't kill his dog, did you? Because now... We know his affinity for dogs and for, like, throat punching and gunning people and headshots with guns. John Wick does not miss. I want to count the bullets in a John Wick movie. I'm sure there's already those videos on YouTube where you could just go and see how the kill count of John Wick's. But, I mean, that guy has got so many counts of murder against him.
Yeah, Will. Will's right. We should chime in like at least four station identification breaks to just say, you've been watching Aristotle Full Throttle. Go to AristotleFullThrottle.com to subscribe. If you subscribe and comment, you have a chance to win a PS4. Also, guess what? I have a Patreon. And you can support this nonsense through Patreon. $1, $2, $5, $10 a month, maybe even $100 a month if you are feeling generous. That can keep this show going. I will send you a sticker. I will send. You, I will start making t-shirts and mugs with my face on it. Mugs with my mug. And we can all be friends forever, best friends forever. And uh, we can keep the show going. It's Rona time, ladies and gentlemen. Also... In this station identification, I'd also like to say that Man of Steel was not as good as it should have been, and Episode 9, Star Wars, it was bad. Thank you. I'll mention that again before the end of the show. Star Wars episode... Listen. Episode 9, it's just a bad movie. It's like... It's got things in it. Things happen. A lot of stuff happens in that movie. And then you're just like, why, though? Why, though? I'm watching the whole movie going, why, though? Why are we even here, though? People say that Ryan Johnson ended The Last Jedi in a way that didn't really leave much room for an episode nine. And I'm like, poppycock, that's hogwash. That's nonsense, because you know why? Good writing can write you a new whole new movie, can write you a whole new compelling story, good writing. You just need good writers. That's what RDJ, I call him RDJ, his name is Robert Downey Jr. Sometimes I call him Bobby, sometimes I call him Bobby DJ. I don't call him any of those things. But if you are Robert Downey Jr., Robert Downey Jr. says he loves when the Marvel movies, because he was really involved in the development of a lot of you know the movies that he's in, and uh, he said that they loved when they would write themselves into a corner with the Marvel movies, because then they could, like, actually, it forced them to go up, it forced them to go down, it forced them to go in different directions that they normally wouldn't go, which was brilliant. Star Wars Episode Nine just recycles a bunch of stuff. Yeah, I know, Jimmy James, you love Star Wars, it's okay, you could love Star Wars, I love that you love Star Wars, Jimmy James, I'll tell you that, i tell you that. I'm going to send you some stickers, Jimmy James. You send me, you, you DM me, and I will mail you some stickers. And to anybody who becomes a patron on Patreon, that's also you, Tatiana. Will, I'll, I'll send you stickers because you're, you're a champion. I'm going to call you Will Champion. And I don't mean that pejoratively because that just happens to be the same name as the drummer from Coldplay. But you are Will Champion. You are the real Will Champion. Not that Will Champion is a bad drummer. I'm just saying, Coldplay, divisive band. <laughs> oh, Deus Ex Machina. Yeah. Yeah, Deus Ex Machina. That's a, that's a good episode. Did I already do that? Deus Ex Machina. There's so many Deus Ex Machinas in the, in the Marvel Universe. However, I forgive it. Because they kind of set it up a little bit. Sometimes, though, sometimes a deus ex machina literally comes out of nowhere. Like, just nowhere. There's no reason why someone comes in and just saves the day. And they're like, hey, I'm just here to save the day because, you know, we got to this point in the movie and we needed to resolve things. So I decided to show up. I want to go around doing that. I just want to interrupt people's fights that I see on the street or something. It's people arguing on the street. I just want to go up to them and be like, hey, he's right, you're wrong. Sorry. I'm here to just solve the problem. I'm here to resolve the issue and then leave. I am Johnny Deus Ex Machina. Any which way but loose. Any which way you can. Will bring it. He's doing the deep cuts. Any which way but loose is my favorite movie with Clint Eastwood and an orangutan. Those two movies, I'll tell you, that he would say Clyde left turn, Clyde right turn. And he would punch people out. <laughs> I want to tra- Listen, if you have an orangutan, you could train it anything you wanted to do. I would train my orangutan to punch you out if you bothered me. Clyde, right turn. I think his name was Clyde. If I'm wrong, let me know. <clears throat> Will is champion. 
See, Will's already got stickers. He's already a patron. Follow Will's example and help the show grow. Help Aristotle Full Throttle grow. One day, we're going to have a million subscribers, and we're going to go, hey, remember those first few years where you only had a few thousand subscribers? <laughs> and then I'll say, how could I forget? But I don't forget you guys, because you guys were here from the beginning. Let's get to a million. Let's get to three million. I actually want to get to three million. Let's get to 13 million subscribers. 13 million. Million's not good enough. Not for us. We're champions. We're going to take over the, the whole internet. We're going to become, once YouTube is finally defunct, we'll own it. Watch out. Watch out, PewDiePie. We're coming for you. We're, we don't even need no video games or racism, PewDiePie. Yes. Bongani sh here, is here. The future looks bright. Here, here it is. But there's so many good anim animal movies. Remember the Benjis? Remember the Lassies? I watched so many Benjis when I was a kid. I didn't quite know if it was the same dog. But for some reason, we don't care. We just watch the movie and we're like, oh, yeah, well, that's the same dog, sure. Or the cat in Alien, which made it through all the Alien movies, pretty much. The first three Alien movies, the cat survived longer than, than Ripley, which is insane. Didn't the cat survive the crash, too, in Alien 3? I could be making that up, but I would like to think that's true. The cat survived. That's a, you know, that's an alien cat. That's a, <laughs> that's a cat for you. That's a buddy movie. You know, I was just thinking about, uh, about the history of animals in show business. And, uh, it's gotten better. <laughs> it's gotten better. Remember that little dog that Charlie Chaplin would run around with? That was a cute dog. You guys remember the dog from the Little Rascals? Little Rascals, unfortunately, of its time, had a cute little dog called Spot, I think, and he had like a circle around his eye. And I was always like, how does a dog have a cir perfect circle around its eyeball? Let's just go with it. But that dog was cute, but I'm sure they I'm sure they did bad things to that dog to make him to make him uh, very obedient. I watched Ex Machina again the other day. There's no animals in that. Did you guys see Ex Machina? I suppose that uh, the actress in that is kind of kept like a caged animal. Her character. Hollywood loves you. What was Charlie Chaplin's dog? Charlie Chaplin, dog. <clears throat> I think the best way to get to get further on YouTube, guys, is we need to start a feud with somebody. We need to pick somebody and start a feud. So I'm going to call out Chris Stuckman for no apparent reason. Chris Stuckman, I'm coming for you. This is one criticism I have of Chris Stuckman. I'm going to review Chris Stuckman's reviews, which I've watched many of. But Chris Stuckman, and this is going to be... This is going to be the start of a YouTube YouTuber feud. Not really, though. I don't really have any beef against Chris Stuckman. Other than, he says this. This movie really surprised me. He's constantly surprised by movies. Like, what are you expecting, Chris Stuckman, when you go to a movie? You go to a movie, you're like, this movie surprised me. I was really surprised. Like, what surprised you about it? Did it shoot water on your head suddenly? Did this the movie suddenly come alive? Did everything jump off the screen and then take your beer order, Chris Stuckman? Why are you surprised? It's a movie. It's almost like he th expects every movie to be bad. <laughs> Just see, along with Bruce Willis putting on clothes in every scene that he's ever in, you're now going to watch Chris Stuckman reviews and go, why is he constantly surprised? 
This guy seems to be, he's got a very low threshold for surprise. Things really impressed this guy for no apparent reason. This movie surprised me. I'll tell you what, I bet you Star Wars Episode Nine surprised him. So many people coming back at me with Star Wars and saying how Episode Nine. I'm, I'm going to get off the subject, don't worry, Jimmy James. But Episode Nine, people people be like, I liked it, there was things in it, and there was, and listen, I, there's some things I like about it. Babu Frick, he's my, he is my maternal godfather. He, he is, Babu Frick is probably my favorite thing ever. Babu Frick. He fixes robots and androids. He little man. Tu Wang Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. Wait, what? I don't even know what you mean by that, Will. Tu Wang Fu, thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. That is the greatest title in movie history. That is the best movie featuring Wesley Snipes in drag that exists. That I know of. Maybe you guys know one. Maybe. I think it's Wesley Snipes, John Lequizamo, and our favorite, Patrick Swayze. Patrick Swayze has left us, but he left us with an incredible, incredible film resume, this guy. Hey, Well Gone Weird, we're talking about uh, movies like we do every day here on Aristotle Full Throttle. I was just bashing Star Wars Episode Nine because, you know, it's not the greatest movie. In fact, it's probably one of the worst. And we were talking about <laughs> Man of Steel, not the best Superman movie either. The best Superman movie, I think we can all agree, is Superman the movie from 1978. You will believe a man could fly. This was the subtitle of that movie. And I watched it and I was like, no, I believe a man could hang from wires. That seems reasonable. That seems what it looks like what I'm watching. I, I do not, I still don't believe a man could fly. I do believe you have a crane and you have wires that are very thin that I cannot see on camera. Uh-oh, you haven't seen Star Wars in full? Jimmy James Cordova, you need to go after Well Gone Weird and, and tell them what's what. Because if they've not seen Star Wars in full, Jimmy James has a word to, to have with you. He's got a bone to pick with you. Because me and Jimmy James, to be honest, I got to tell you, you ain't seen a Star Wars movie, then, um, then you are not in Disney's back pocket. <laughs> then you are of a free-thinking mind. You have not yet succumbed to the monolithic Goliath that is pop popular culture. That's a good thing, I think. That's great, actually. Congratulations for not watching Star Wars. There's only three movies, anyway. I'm going to tell you there's only three Star Wars movies, and they came out in 77, 80, and 83. Those are the only Star Wars movies that are out there, right, Jimmy James? Jimmy James is laughing because he knows that ain't true. Um... I actually couldn't bring myself to watch Second Cinema Wins for uh, Cinema Sins. Oh, you're talking about Cinema Sins? Oh, I can't even watch this. There's two Cinema Sins episodes on Star Wars Episode Nine, which I'm going to promptly watch while I take a nap. I'm very tired today. I don't know why. I was shot out of a cannon at the beginning of this hour, but now we're down to the last minute on Instagram. But we're here every day at noon. Sometimes there's lulls. But whenever there's a lull, just bring up Man of Steel or Star Wars Episode Nine, and I will, I will get angry, I will get animated, I will come alive as Peter Frampton did in the '70s with his talk box and his guitar solos. Don't worry, I saw Little Mermaid, so I'm properly brainwashed. Yeah, The Little Mermaid is fantastic. My little sister would watch The Little Mermaid every single day for two years, so I know that movie like the back of my under the sea. Everything's better down where it's wetter. Take it from me. Even the Sturgeon and the Ray, they want to play. We got 10 seconds left here on Instagram. If you want to keep watching, go over to AristotleFullThrottle.com and watch the live stream right now. I'll see you guys on Instagram tomorrow. Maybe. Probably. Bye. Hey, everybody. We're back. It's just us. It's just you and me. We can let down our hair. We can let out our curls. We can let our froze go. 
right now. But uh, I appreciate all of you for tuning in every single day and supporting this channel, supporting this nonsense, and actually fanning the flames of my hatred to Star Wars Episode Nine. <laughs> oh, man. Listen, it's not that bad, but don't tell Jimmy James I said that. And if Jimmy James, you're watching that this right now, I really hope you are so that you can see that I'm, I'm mentioning you on my live, my replay, and I'm very happy that you're watching the replay. Thank you. Uh, but I get it. Listen, I, there's certain things that I love unconditionally too. Like my dog. He would, like one time I let my little dog when he was alive, my little dog, Pappy, he was a Papillon dog. I let him, I was like, you know what, Pappy, you're getting old. Why don't you sleep on the bed with us? Why don't you come up into the bed? You're getting old. You're a cute little dog. You're fluffy. You're cute. He peed on my pillow when I was sleeping. But I was just like, I, I still can't hate you, you little guy. I still can't hate you. He would like, he'd yell at you. He'd steal food from your hand. But I'm like, hey, that's, that's my little guy. What a jerk but I love them. So I get loving things unconditionally. I get understand. I can understand and appreciate a love for star Wars. That is irrational. <laughs> like my love for my old dog. So let's all be, uh, kind to one another. Let's all share in our love for movies. This is our hangout, our daily dose of hanging out. Tell your friends. They can come along, too. We could talk about animals and little little animal dogs that you love unconditional, unconditionally. And, and we could talk about Mothra. New Cinema Wins. Oh, Cinema Wins. What Cinema Wins? I thought you meant Cinema Sins, Will. I, I don't know Cinema Wins. I got to check out what made Star Wars Episode Nine good because... I can't think of anything. The dialogue was pretty snappy, though. I did like the snap. Um, I did like the dialogue. There were certain things like uh, there's a line. There's a lot of clever lines in the movie. I will give Star Wars Episode Nine. It has several clever lines and well delivered lines. Um, like in the first part of the movie, because I was watching it just the other day, Ray says to Poe. Um, I forget what they were looking for, but they were looking for a map, I guess. She says, uh, I forgot what she said. She says, no, no enemies. And he's like, and then Poe's like, no enemies. He says the same thing back to her, but in a different way. And I was like, you know what? I'll tell you, some of these actors, they're good at acting. These actors is good at acting, some of them. They're all good at acting. I'd say that the b biggest revelation from the Star Wars movies is John Boyega. John Boyega is, is the man. He's got charisma for months and months and months and years, that guy. He's got charisma out the kaz charisma kazoo. Uh, Daisy Ridley is fantastic. She's very elegant. She's almost not as gruff as she ought to be being kind of like a scavenger, but that's fine. But John Boyega is a good actor. He's a very charismatic guy. He's got more energy than I do, particularly right now. I'm going to take a nap. I actually passed out right before I came out on the air today. I took a nap. I put my head down like I was in fourth grade and I was tired. Put my head down on the table and I took a nap. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, guys. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I appreciate your your continued support. It means everything. This is a, this show does not exist without folks like you supporting it. And uh, every day we're getting you know a few more people joining the club, and eventually we'll take it all over. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Aristotle Full Throttle. You're in the know with the fro, and I'll see you tomorrow. Maybe. Listen, I want to go to the beach. So if I'm driving to the beach, I will do a live stream from Instagram at noon. But if I'm not driving to the beach, because the beaches are closed, we're going to be in quarantine together. I just want to look at the ocean. 
I'll stay in my car. All right, guys. Thank you so much.